Today's lesson will involve a review of the quiz on um, romantic poetry and Dr. Faust, and the answers could be found at the end of the video, and we'll go through uh, the beginning of Act 2 of uh, Ibsen's The Doll's House. Well, let me begin with a prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. From the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. So today we'll uh, take a moment and go through pages uh, 33 to 48 of A Doll's House. And at the end of Act 1, we got to see Nora becoming really concerned when she found out how her husband feels about forger, uh, forgery. And we found out that Krogstad had committed the same crime, and her husband sees it as uh, someone being a hypocrite. And so at the beginning of Act 2 here, we can see that Nora is acting very nervous and worried, okay? And she's talking to Anne, her nurse, and she's got this big... Uh, dress ball that she's going to with her husband and we know that that dress ball is a symbol so make sure we note that down so dress ball symbol okay and it's a symbol of them getting dressed up and pro almost performing as the the perfect couple and Nora knows that Torvald wants to go, but she doesn't want to go, and she's thinking about even ripping up that dress, and that dress is another symbol of Nora acting as a doll, performing for her husband. And what we learned from Anne, Nora's nurse for the children, was that Anne was Nora's nurse when Nora was a child. And Nora questions Anne about how Anne could leave her daughter without a mother. Anne had a uh, daughter years ago, and she uh, left her daughter to be Nora's nurse. And Nora questions her about this. And something that Nora's perhaps, perhaps thinking about, gee, maybe would I leave my own children? Would I be able to do it? Am I strong enough to do it? Maybe a little bit of foreshadowing here. So as she ponders that, then Mrs. Lind comes into the house, and we know that Nora needs, Nora and Mrs. Lind are foils, and Nora needs Christine's help for sewing her outfit for the fancy dress ball. The ball. And at the ball, Nora is going to dance the Tarantella. Okay. All right, and the Tarantella is a dance... And another symbol. Okay. And it's a symbol of Nora performing for her own husband. Okay. That she's got to perform. She's got to act like the person that she really isn't. So she's got to do that. Do this dance at the ball. And she's mostly doing it to impress her husband. And she's got this all in the back of her mind. And... When she gets a chance to talk with Dr. Rank, who's a very close family friend, she acts totally different around him. All right, She's relaxed, she can tell him anything, and she doesn't have to act. So you might want to note that Torvald and Dr. Rank... So Torvald and Dr. Rank can be seen as foils. She can act one way around her husband, which is kind of like a doll, and another way around Dr. Rank, where she feels totally comfortable and totally uh, normal around him. And that's where that relationship between Dr. Rank and Nora is so different. And Mrs. Lynn's trying to figure out what's going on uh, between them. So when... Nora's husband, Torvald, comes home from the bank. Nora asks him and kind of begs and pleads with him to keep 
Krogstad on at the bank. But Torvald says, I can't do that because I've given Krogstad's job to Mrs. Lind. She's the one who's going to get it. And I'm going to look totally foolish if I change my mind because of your pleading, of your doing. And <clears throat> Nora keeps begging and begging. And she says, look, he's going to expose something terribly wrong about us. We're going to get in a lot of, we'll, we'll get a lot of bad publicity. And so Torvald brings up something that happened to Nora's father in the past. That Nora's father was accused of some illegal activities. And his activities were exposed in the newspapers. And Torvald was able to help Nora's father. And Nora was so ever grateful for it. And Torvald said, look. Your father acted one way. I'm totally different. And the same thing is not going to happen. So Nora is keeping this secret, this forgery from her husband. And it's really affecting their marriage and their lives. So much so that she still begs him to keep on Krogstad at the bank. And Torvald gets so upset at Nora. He becomes so obstinate. And he's done, he wants to show Nora that he's the man of the house He's not going to make he's not going to change his decision and he's going to instead of keeping on Krogstad a little bit longer he's going to fire Krogstad immediately so he's not going to change his decision and so what Torvald gets Helen the maid to do immediately is to get a messenger and get a letter to Krogstad and this is Krogstad's termination letter and Nora is terribly upset about it. So her reaction is that she wants to get that letter back and stop it from being sent. But Torvald says, look, this is my final decision. I'm not doing it. This is what it is. And so now she's nervous. She's worried. And the one person she can tell the truth to comes over to the house, and that's Dr. Rank. And when Dr. Rank comes over to the house... He tells Nora that he's close to dying. And what he doesn't want Torvald to know is that he's dying. And that, well, I shouldn't say that he's not dying. He's, he doesn't want Torvald to see him as he's dying. And Nora, Tor, uh, Dr. Rank says to Nora, look, when I'm close to dying, you're going to get a calling card from me. And it's going to be a calling card with a black cross on it, another symbol. And it's the symbol of Dr. Rank's impending death. And Dr. Rank is another person who is suffering from the sins of his parents. Nora has inherited her wild uh, spending habits from her father. And Dr. Rank inherited this disease uh, from his father's uh, wild living when he was younger. And Nora is also another person who is suffering. And she's suffering in living in a marriage where she can't be herself or she can't be truthful. And we certainly see the way she acts around her husband, Torvald, and the way she acts around Dr. Rank. She feels she can tell Dr. Rank anything and she can be totally complete and completely honest with him. And Dr. Rank tells Nora that he loves her and respects her for who she is. Now, this isn't some kind of romantic relationship that Dr. Rank wants to have with Nora. It's just, with all your faults, with all your weaknesses, I love you for who you are. And this is probably a way that Ibsen is saying to readers to viewers of the play that you should love a person for who he or she really is and not who you want that person to be and when he tells her that the maid Helen brings in an important symbol and that symbol is a lamp okay and that lamp is another symbol that's shedding light on the truth Nora should be loved for who she is. And Nora is about to tell the truth to Dr. Rank about all that's going on with the loan, with the forgery, everything, 
when Helen the maid comes in to tell her that Krogstad has come over to the house. So that's the end of Act 2. The homework assignment that I had uh, due for Monday, we're going to push it to Tuesday, give everybody the weekend off, okay? And after this, you can see I have the answers to the um, quiz that was on Dr. Faust and Romantic Poetry. If you have any questions on any of the answers whatsoever, by all means, um, come and see me about it. Again, uh, come and see. you can just email me about them. And um, have a nice weekend. So there's no homework due Monday. Everything will just push back to, uh, to Tuesday. All right. So I'll change that in Schoology. If you have time and you want to do it, go ahead. Um, but if not, don't worry about it. So have a nice weekend. And most importantly, uh, don't get arrested.